Hi, my name is Jeff H. Seif from practiceinterviews.com, where we offer a host of services and we have a ton of free resources. Check out our website. In this video, we are going to cover the interview with the recruiter. There are so many questions that are coming up from our clients and in our lives every week that ask a lot of questions about this interview. And I want to really focus on the fact that I have about 12 to 13 years of recruiting experience. I've done thousands of these initial candidate interviews, and I want to give you a little bit more insight into what they look like. And we're going to talk about everything. We're going to talk about the preparation, considerations, logistics, what will be asked of you, and then finally, what types of questions you should ask. And I'm going to dump a ton of information in the YouTube description to really help and guide you. If you like my content, please like. If you have any comments, please comment below. And if you like my overall content, please subscribe. Item one is prep. And there's a few ways that you can prep for this conversation. Item one, the job description. So I'm actually gonna pin a link down in the YouTube description where you can join and get into our free course where we really walk through this exercise. But a couple of things I want you to think about. I want you to create a streamlined overview and then I want you to identify keywords and I want you to go back through and do this exercise a few times to just kind of identify what is most important, what appear to be the most important skills and needs for the role. Just going through this simplistic exercise is a critical part of your prep and will help you feel more prepared for this recruiter conversation. The second item is company research. Some recruiters will literally ask you, what do you know about our company? Or why this company? Or what is your favorite product? Or name your three favorite product? Or what happened recently in the news? And we'll get back to this later on in our conversation, but along with a JD, it's important that you've at least done some basic research. Some recruiters will want to challenge your knowledge about the organization. And it's just to see how much you've prepared, if you really, really care. Because if you have, you'll have done just a little bit of research, not a ton. The last is domain and technical knowledge. And so when it comes to specific domain knowledge, I mean, that's going to be an area where either you really have it or you don't. But there are some ways you can up your game just a little bit in terms of prep. Let's say you spent the last three years working on AWS or with AWS technologies, and now you're interviewing for GCP. Well, understand some of the basics, just the basics. Remember, your recruiter is not supposed to be an expert in this space, but if you learned a little bit about GCP, it could help your conversation. Um, you can also build up just a little bit of that specific product knowledge as well. Um, that's something else to consider. And then lastly, on the technology side, and we're going to reference this later, but there are some interviews that are going to have some technical questions. So just understanding some of the fundamentals that might be important for the role, that can also be helpful. Lastly, is questions. We will deep dive into this section later on, but you're going to want to really prep those questions. Here's the good news. I've prepped those questions for you and I'll put them in the YouTube description for you. Item two is considerations. So I want to take a little bit of a different lens here. This is something that other people talk about, but I want to put it all together. It's a pretty big item. So let's dive in and talk through a few of these things. So the purpose, why are we having this conversation with the recruiter? It's really two items. It's going to be skill alignment and communication skills. So they just want to check that you have the minimum qualifications needed to do this job. And specifically, maybe the hiring manager has told them a few of their specific needs based on what they want overall or based on what they've seen from the recent candidate pool. Now, your communication skills, this is the bigger bucket. So what are all the things we want to focus in on? Things we've talked a lot about before, being positive and showing great gratitude. But then there's more of the excitement, enthusiasm, engagement, even smiling. They can hear your smile over the phone if it's a phone conversation, which is a likely recruiter interview. So make sure you smile a lot. They can hear that in your voice. And then bring in that active listening piece. Really let them lead and guide the conversation. 
And that's a great segue into the brevity piece. So you're gonna have limited time in this conversation and I want you to ask a ton of questions. So in your communication style, less is more. If they want more data, they'll ask follow-up questions. So just make sure that you're being really brief. Then let's talk about the partnership component. Your relationship with your recruiter is a partnership. You want the job and their job is to fill the role. So let them be an advocate for you, work with them, and remember that they do have influence and pull. This is a win-win situation. You wanna build that strong relationship, it will really help. The last kind of a little bit more random nuance I want you to think about is just roles. So let's say a recruiter reached out to you for a role and or you found another role that you really like or interested in, just be prepared to talk about that with them, what the process would look like if you were gonna interview for both roles or if you wanted to switch over roles, do you need to switch recruiters, et cetera, et cetera. So if there are or is another position or positions that you're interested in, it's just another consideration to think about. Item three, logistics. This will be nice and sweet. The number one item is be on time. This is a super big challenge that I've found for candidates is the lack of respect coming in to this recruiter interview. They're not on time, they miss it, they say they had another important meeting. Recruiters are treated with very little respect. And so this was always something that I noted. Did they miss the call? Were they not on time? Did they pretend like I wasn't important? Being on time is a courtesy item, be on time. You'd be shocked at how many people are miss or are late for recruiter interviews. Secondly, stand. I'm standing right now for this video, and if it's a phone interview again, which is the likely scenario, your voice will just have a little bit more energy. It will come through a little bit better if you stand. Be somewhere quiet. Again, this goes back to the respect thing. If you're just gonna be in a noisy area and treat it casually, the recruiter's gonna note that in their mind and say this person isn't that serious. And then the last piece from a logistics perspective is if you are considering interviewing for a more technical role, you'll wanna reach out to them beforehand and just kinda of understand, hey, I'm looking forward to our conversation. Will any technical questions be covered? So I can tell you, I used to hire customer engineers um, in my last year at Google, and I would hire technical solutions engineers, and I would give them like 10 or 15 technical questions and if they had a little bit of time to prepare on the fundamentals, like we mentioned earlier, um, they would have done better. Sometimes they just came in not really knowing that that was gonna be a focus area. Okay, let's dive in to the questions that you should anticipate. So item four is the recruiter's questions. In no way, shape or form do these questions encapsulate all of what you might face in this recruiter interview, but these are gonna be the high level themes, what we just see most commonly and most classically in these types of interviews. And I wanna kinda of just take a step back for a second. There are three types of questions that I would always ask and do always ask um, when I'm doing and on the recruiting side of things. So the number one question I ask is why? Why did you apply? Or why did you respond to me reaching out to you? This why will really help me uncover and gather a lot of data, so that's always my first question. My second question is also always the same. What's most important to you? This helps me determine motivations, drivers, and these initial two questions are very open-ended. I can learn a lot about the candidate with just these two questions. Number three, I would always ask my hiring manager, hey, Sue, what are the questions that this candidate absolutely needs to be able to answer to do well in this job, to be qualified for this job? And I would always try and get those questions, at least two or three. And those would be my role-related questions. Now, of course, depending on the domain, that could go in a lot of different areas. Now, let's dive over to the commonly asked questions. Number one, tell me about yourself. What's the one piece of advice, one minute or less? Walk me through your resume, one minute to 90 seconds. I'll allot a little bit more time for walking through the resume. Why this company, one minute or less. Think about three items. The rule of three on these types of questions can be really powerful. Why are you looking to leave your current job? Focus on their job, their opportunity. Make it super positive. 
How would your current manager or teammates describe you? This is essentially the strengths question, so just be thinking about your top three skills or strengths, especially as they correlate to the role, and that's how you'd answer that question. What do you know about our company? You can actually ask follow-up questions to that. I can tell you about what's going on in the news, about my favorite products, etc. So just do your research. What are you looking for in your next opportunity? Again, go back to the job description, think about the key skills for this job, the culture of the organization, and really align it there. That will help you have success. What is your current situation or timing? The timing question is almost always going to be coming up, so be prepared to answer that. What is your current compensation? That can still be asked in a number of countries, still a number of states. If it can't be asked, they're going to ask for your salary expectations. My advice is never give them any data. People will disagree with that. They'll say, how do you know if it's aligned? You should have done some research on comp and know that it's going to at least hit close to your target number. But I say deflect, 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 and I'll throw a card up there just so you can see my philosophy here. And then the last question is, are you actively interviewing? And you should provide that data because that data is going to be helpful for them. It goes back to the partnership item. Lots of times, especially at Google, I would have candidates. I would say, are you interviewing anywhere else? And then we'd be at the phone interview stage and they'd say, hey, I just got two offers. I'd say, good luck. I can't help you. You didn't provide this information for me up front. It's critical that you are providing massive clarity there, not only in the beginning in this initial conversation, but throughout. Let them know what's going on. It will allow them to push the process. Okay, I know that this just scratched the surface, but these are some very common questions that I want you to be prepared for. Now, your questions, item five. So the item that's really critical here is, I want you to set the stage, meaning I recommend 32 questions. It is a ton of questions. So how do you not annoy your recruiter? You just tell them, hey, Jane, I have a ton of questions that I want to ask you and I have them outlined and organized and I want to be very respectful of your time. So if it's cool with you, I just love to dive in. I really want to get through all these questions as much as it's not running into any other meetings for you. So you've set a really good communication tone. And so here's where we're going to start. Personal. I think we do this in every single interview. We ask a few personal questions. People like talking about themselves. They'll feel more comfortable with you. So what do you love the most about your company? What do you love the most about your job? Is there something really cool or fun or unique that I should know about the culture that maybe I didn't read about or I should know about? This will get them engaged, show your engagement, your excitement. Then foundational questions. Why is the position open? We need to know if it's brand new, if it's growth, half the team quit, there was a layoff, etc. How long has the position been open? That will tell you how much difficulty they are having hiring the position. Can you tell me about the level of the role? So for the bigger companies, they will have an idea. They should be able to share that information with you. Can you tell me how many people are currently interviewing for the role? Now, this is a question I would absolutely answer. It's not confidential. I would tell you if, hey, you're the only one. We have five, we have 10. It's just a good data point. And then lastly, can you tell me if you're considering internal or external candidates? It's a data point. I saw this somewhere else. I think it's an okay question, but it might just be good knowledge for the future to know like if internal candidates, especially those are maybe who are contracting, have the opportunity to be converted. It's an okay question. Now we're going to do some data gathering. Why do you think my position is a good fit? So we're trying to uncover what is really what our strengths are and why there's alignment there. That can be powerful as you go into the interview. What are maybe some of the most critical skills needed to have success? They might have that data from the hiring manager. Are there any gaps? Any skills you see that are missing that I maybe don't have that I need to have success in this role? Those are maybe can be some learned skills as you're preparing for the interviews if you move forward. Are there any themes coming up from others where things are falling short or just missing? Again, this is a huge data point. If there's one or two pieces that have just been missing from everybody else, you're going to want to focus on those items in your prep. Can you tell me a little bit more about the team structure? Like how many people are on the team? 
Is this hybrid roles, all this one role? Who's the hiring manager? Just a little bit more data on the team if you can gather it. It's not as important at this time, but it's a good question. And then a last great question would be, what's the culture of this team? Anything I should be aware of from a cultural perspective? Teams can function very differently within organizations, so it's a great question. Then the process. This is a huge item. Can you tell me more about the specific steps? Specifically, we're trying to uncover the number of interviews, the stages, like how they're conducted, phone, video, and hopefully in the near future in person. What is the total number of interviews? A great question. What are the focus areas? Like, do I have a coding interview? Do I have a system design interview? Do I have a leadership interview? We really want to know the focus areas and then types of questions. Do these interviews, are they open-ended? Are they behavioral? Are they both? Are there certain types of questions I should prepare for? That is a question that very few people ask and actually you can uncover a ton of data there. Do not skip that question. It's a critical question. Sometimes you can uncover a lot of great information. Then there's a little bit more about the process. So can you tell me more about the end of the process and who's the final decision maker? Sometimes it's just the hiring manager. Sometimes it's a collection of everybody getting together and deciding. Sometimes it's hiring committee, executive committee, etc. And then length of the process. How long does it typically take? Sometimes startups take a week. Google takes like three months. So just trying to determine that will be a helpful data point as well. Now communication. You want to create this cadence with them. How often will I hear back from you? Or should I proactively be reaching out to you? If I'm reaching out to you, what do you prefer? Call, text, email? And then this last question is a great question. Do you have a backup? Is there another POC that I can get their information? Just in case you're out of the office or anything happens, I would love a backup person's info. I think a lot of people would find this valuable at some points. If you can get that, that's great. Now let's talk about the important logistics questions. Like the whiteboard. So in some of these video interviews now, they're being told you can't use a whiteboard, some you can. So you wanna find out that data. You wanna find out once it's in person, if you're actually gonna have a whiteboard in that room, it just might help with your prep strategy. What should you wear? I get asked that question a lot. That's a question for your recruiter. You always wanna ask them. And then anything else that you should be aware of, like any like tricks or tips with the video platform if you're less familiar with it. When we do go back on site, anything about the location, should I use the front door, the side door, is parking tricky? Is there somewhere where people continually get lost when they come to this office? It's a great, great question. Now let's focus on some optional logistics questions. This depends on rapport and basically what you need to uncover. So you might wanna find out about location, like let's say it's the location San Francisco, but you live in San Diego and you wanna see if you could work remote, is that something that they're open to? If the job doesn't call out travel, but you think it might have some travel or it says 25% travel, you might wanna uncover a couple of details about how much travel, if that declines over time, grows over time. What is the salary range? You can actually ask that question and they have to answer it in California. Now for like a big tech company, it's not that great because they can give you the salary range, but they don't have to give you bonus or stock information. Uh, can you share the benefits package with me? Um, I would share that with, with prospective candidates at Google. There was no confidential information in there, so you can share that. Um, the reason why all these are optional is sometimes they're gonna be important, sometimes they're not gonna be important. And when it comes to benefits and comp, you just wanna be careful in those initial conversations. It might be too much. The last question, is there anything that I didn't ask? Are there, is there typically a question or questions that you hear from other candidates that you don't think I asked. Now, if you ask all these questions, chances are you've asked everything, but it's just a great catch-all question. We just don't know. I really hope this video helps. I know we went into the weeds. We covered a ton in this video, but if you're thinking about all these items, you'll have massive success, and I'm gonna put it all in the YouTube description so you don't have to do as much thinking. These are pretty simplistic conversations, but you do wanna be prepared for them. I hope this helps. Thanks.